Hello YouTube and Facebook. Back at it again. Um, I started to do a video sooner and I just, like I always tell people I pre-stream stuff. I didn't like the way it turned out so I'm going to go have another go at it. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in delivering what uh, I aim to deliver. First and foremost is the message the Lord wants me to give. But also, um, I'm thinking about the subscribers. You know, uh, I really want my subscribers to know that they have invested in something good and they're, they're going to, you know, get some good, uh, really enlightening and uh, good information that you just won't find anywhere else. And, uh, Stand to deliver on another promise. Um, I was talking about James of Alphaeus, but I, when I was looking in on him, I'm going to have to really do more deeper research. Uh, he, his history is about as narrow as any of them that I've run into. Uh, I have found some things on him, however, and I'll bring them up in this video and in this message. Uh, then there's James of Zebedee, which I will deliver upon him too. Then there's also the James, the brother of Jesus, who wrote the book of James, who was not an apostle, but uh, they believe he was in the high courts um, there in Jerusalem, and um, he was the son of Joseph, which made him half-brother of, of Jesus, and, um, you know, of course, you know, Jesus inspired him. To, to get involved and uh, in the book of the Acts you know that is the same James and uh, not to be confused with the other two disciples uh, James of Zebedee he passed on in 44 AD he died in 44 AD and uh, a lot of things that were going on in that time frame Especially when you get into the Acts, uh, you know, I don't think that uh, the, I said it was a time frame, the book was written, the book of the Acts was written in 64 AD, I believe, if you go back and look in your accordance or whatever, so, uh, whether he was even alive. Now, James of Alphaeus, his death wasn't until 62 A.D., so it's quite possible he could have been alive when some of those events were occurring. Um, extract the, the first eight chapters of the Acts, because that's a different time frame altogether, especially the first two, when the uh, Lord pours out his Holy Spirit in chapter 2, and the Lord has another ascension before all the disciples in chapter 1. I love that. I, chapter 1 is one of my favorites. Man, it's so beautiful. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame to be inside right now when you look at the beauty. Praise the Lord. He made it really beautiful today. <laughs> uh, uh, I was going to sit here on my bench. But the audio feed just wasn't going. That was another reason why I decided to go against that. But also felt like there was something I'm missing. And then uh, it caught my attention. I believe the Lord kind of pushed me. Getting 1 Corinthians chapter 3 across was a really big validation that, that I think the Lord wants me to give. Well, well my, here comes my daddy's driving up the drive. <laughs> Come back here and uh, I'll say hello. Oh, is he going for his toy? Well, get your toy. <laughs> say hi to everybody, Bailey. Say hi. <laughs> and, of course, we got the famous Spiky Birdie. You want to say hi to everybody? Yeah, they're wanting to see you. 
I want to see the beautiful Sparky Birdie. Yes. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I I have the head this this put up here because I was I had plans on getting the dogs out. <laughs> I'm moving it so my dad could uh, get in without having to move it. <laughs> oh, you said something, didn't you, huh? He said something now. Oh, he got his wings all out and everything. <laughs> oh, spiky bird. Love that bird. Now I don't have my my throw or my blanket laid out here, <laughs> but okay. I'm hoping the audio turns out real good for this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go into uh, James of Alpheus first. His dad was Alpheus, just like Matthew. And uh, James of Alphaeus is a sibling to Matthew. Uh, what they, uh, whether they were cousins or what, I, I, I were brothers. Uh, they, they had the same dad or same parents. When I go to these listings, it just says parents, Alphaeus. So, but there you have it. He's a, definitely a sibling of Matthew's. Uh, by church tradition, he was named James, commonly known as James the Less. Uh, he was born in Gal Galilee, Israel. He died in 62 A.D. Jerusalem. And he was known for carpentry and uh, using the carpenter's saw and the fuller's club. <clears throat> hey, there's uh, hot dogs and stuff I grilled in there. Just telling my dad I grilled earlier. Uh, now, James of Zebedee, he was known as James the Greater or James the Great by the church. He was born in Bethsidia. Some other uh, apostles and disciples were born there too, just like there were others born in Galilee. He was believed to have died in 44 AD in Jerusalem. Uh... He was amongst the, the fishermen, one of the first apostles. So he was one of the first apostles there with Andrew and Peter and John the Divine. He's one of the original four. Um, some characteristics was he was very temperamental and had a fiery temper. They say he was a lot like Andrew, but he, with... Uh, Andrew, as in Andrew without the temper, because Andrew didn't have the t the fiery temper that he's known for, that that James was the great was known for, of Zebedee. Uh, all the, his death was believed to be on July twenty five, July twenty fifth, a, fe a feast day. Now, how he died, I could not find the exact on that. Um, One of the things I mentioned in one of my past videos, which brought my attention, which I'll have to go back in the word on it, but one of the major sources they say about the argument over sitting on the right and left, they say that uh, it was his mother uh, that brought this up, and all, and John, John's mother, they were brothers. <laughs> That's the biggest interesting thing I found about James of Zebedee. They, him and John the Divine were brothers. Uh, but it's supposed to me that uh, supposedly the mother was the one that suggested that they sit on the right hand or the left with the Lord and stuff. And uh, so that might have you, that was just brought up. Okay. Now, we're going to Joshua. 
24-15. And what I'm going to go here is kind of what I think is needed right now in these times. Um, but we're going to go ahead and... Uh, I may start at 14 and go down. Joshua 24-14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. Okay. Those gods were those Sumerian gods. Any of those who watched my Nimrod video and the sequel. Which I can't remember the title of the sequel. Uh, I think it would be under the full armor, full armor of God series. If you want to see that. If you've, you're just now uh, seeing my content or whatever. And this is your first time viewer. Uh, well anyways. You know, that's who Nimrod uh, started uh, going into worshipping and stuff. And, uh, you know, these, these false deities or whatever might have you. And this is what Joshua is addressing to the Amorites. <clears throat> and we'll go on to 15 here. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye or you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I have, me and my dad have that up here in, the, in our home. <laughs> and, you know, I, I believe it wholeheartedly. As for me and my house, you know, we serve the Lord. Uh... Like I say, I try to be adamant to tell people, you know, know, know the times we live in, you know. Um, I don't talk about politics too often. And I think if you go too far one way direction, it can be bad. Or if you go too extreme in the other, it can be bad. But I don't believe in no mi middle either. Um, I would consider myself on the right. <laughs> uh, but... You know, you see a lot of these leftist politicians, their heads swelling up and getting big, and they're talking like they own people and stuff now with this quarantine situation. And then you have cor corporations, you know, you know, which, don't get me wrong, I support the quarantine and stuff, but there is going to be time down the road, which I believe that since our great president, uh, in my opinion, he's one of the greatest set of all time, <laughs> Uh, put him up there with George Washington, you know. George Washington uh, faced off against the British Empire, so he yeah, has a pretty big feat. We had a foreign invader on our land, so. But uh, this virus thing is all it is, in my opinion, it's just a big. Uh, I referenced Trey Smith's video, which is on Jeremy's list. If you look in my archives or whatever, where I have the Grace series, the Former of God series. And the Apostle series, there I have two Jeremy's lists. It should be on the one that you come to, some will cross to first, with Trey Smith talking about um, Kim Clement. And he's, Kim Clement was adamant about this subtle uh, attack. And that's, you know, this, this whole virus situation, you know. Uh, tell you how to lace your shoes and stuff, you know. I say, hopefully, you know, that, I think, you know, George, the state of Georgia, they opened back up. You know, just, you know, they've shown the findings, like countries like Sweden and stuff. The people respected the um, quarantine anyway, but it wasn't enforced. And they said that some of those places are doing better. Like one of the states, the north of South Dakota, you know, it's talking about, you know, there wasn't no forcing there, but yet the people stayed inside and went through with the quarantine but they seem to favor tend to favor better than most other places that did so you know the you know the say this thing has a shelf life and you just gotta think you know how many months do you go you know before you open the economy back up you know a lot of people are afraid well this might be too soon well i mean you know you can argue the six day thing for so long but i mean it should be getting pretty close to where just about everybody should be 
unless they were one of those late ones that didn't comply much later. But, <clears throat> you know, just give, throw heat of caution out there. You know, uh, pay attention to you know, the times we live in and, and know. Uh, I'm confident that the states will make the right decisions, So I am confident in that. I'll go to Joshua 1-9. Went too far off of the, the what I'm trying to give here. <clears throat> Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with ever, soever thou goest. That's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ talking, Lord God Almighty talking to Joshua. Just know the Holy King of Glory, the Most High, He is in control. He is sovereign, and, and He loves our souls. He's a lover of our souls. We love Him for He first loved us, as King David so adamantly always put. Okay. Well, drats. I lost my marker on that. That doesn't make me ha not makes me unhappy. <laughs> It's fun, I'm trying to jab balance this one hand. Soon, very soon, I think I will try to straighten this out where I can get a better it's first Corinthians three there. I lost my bookmark on that. I just did it twice. Unbelievable. The forces are really trying to keep me from referencing that scripture, but it's going to get referenced. <laughs> I'm going to go to it. But first, before I get to that, sorry about that bad camera angle, I'm going to go to James 2 and 14. Now, I had something on James here. Uh, he was the son of Joseph, of course, I told everybody that. He's a half-brother of Jesus. And he, known, his occupation was construction worker. And, of course, he sat within uh, the hierarchy there in Jerusalem after 60 uh, CE or AD. I always go with AD, but CE is the modern term or whatever, might have you. And of course, everybody knows that from 68 to 70 AD was when um, Israel got Jerusalem got sacked, and a lot of bad things happened. Uh, okay, we're gonna go to James 2:14. One of the biggest uh, things that I think gets misinterpreted and misconstrued. And uh, this is what, unfortunately what most people, especially legalists, will go to right away in a hurry when it comes to talking about salvation and stuff. And I'll, I'll give you my, um, how do you say it? I'll just give you my outlook on this. <clears throat> what doeth the prophet my brethren, though a man may say he hath faith and not and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warned and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What, what doeth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Okay. I think here what we're having is, is James... It's validating what um, 
Some will speculate whether he was able to see Paul's writings and stuff. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. But what I will say is um, there is a scripture in, in Matthew no, not Matthew, in Acts. I think it's chapter 15 or 14. Somewhere around there where they're discussing circumcision, if you will. But uh, James and Paul actually comes to agreement on certain things in that passage. But I may try to look and see where I had that jotted down. But anyways... Where we're going to go into 1 Corinthians. Here in a minute. 3. And Ephesians 2. I'm going to tell you what Paul has to say about, about the situation. But. We'll read this one more time. Yea, yea a man. May say thou hast faith. And I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Okay. He is not saying that you get salvation by works. What he's saying there is is he will show you he will show you thee my faith by my works. In other words once you get salvation, which Paul, and this is why I'm talking about validity, Paul validates this. You, you're saved through your faith. Jesus finished the work. Okay? But works will come after you receive salvation. And that's what I think that James is adamantly, and if you even read after that, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Okay. In other words, he just saying that um, by activating your faith, works comes with it. That's my interpretation of the scripture. I don't see where um, so many say that he, the, it's saying that you get your salvation through works. There's nothing there that validates it. He's just saying that if you, you know, show me that, you know, if you have faith, you'll have works, you know. And makes me think of Jesus talking about being the vine and the branches. He's the vine and we're, we're the branches. And he prunes us, you know, uh, showing good works. And that's another misinterpreted scripture, I believe. But now we're gonna go. Now we're gonna go to where I want to go on this. It's the first. <coughs> now that I have this, I can three ten. It's First Corinthians three ten to fifteen. I might go to nine and down. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, you are God's building. Ye are God's husbandry, and ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, 
he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay, Paul is basically saying the same thing James is saying, people, in, in this passage. You know, um, he's saying, yeah, you have works. They works, uh, once you are saved, you're, you're going to have works. But notice that the difference here is, and this is the big difference, where the difference is, is James really ain't going into detail. He's just excluding the detail of the faith part, activating the faith. And Paul is dotting every I and crossing every T. And, you know, those who know his books really well, they know what I'm getting at. That's the way Paul was. He dotted every I and crossed every T. And, he, you know, he's saying that the foundation is the cornerstone. It's Jesus Christ. It's his works that got it and us our salvation. However, you know, you're going to have works once you're saved. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And, and this right here kind of goes along the lines of that. I thought it was a great scripture to accommodate that. Now to go into Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I may go to 7 and on down. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through, are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. This is the same author. This is Paul talking here. <clears throat> not of works, lest any man should boast. In other words, if you're boasting that all your life doings, you've earned your salvation because of all your life doings. No. It's nothing we do earns us, people. However, once we are saved, we will do good works. I don't understand the confusion many have on this. Do not. The, the word is clear about it, clear and decisive about it. Um, we go on down. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers, from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. See there, without Jesus... Coming in the completion at the cross, the Gentiles will never got drafted in. So, you know, there you have it. The Lord wanted the all of the world. He didn't just want uh, just one nation. He wanted the entire world. And he he came to Calvary, set us free. He he paid the sin debt wager in full for us that we may live. And it's His glory. His grace alone. And there you have it. But like I say. That's why we don't mix. Like I say in one of my past videos I did. Uh, I'm starting to forget all the daggone titles. Forgive me. There's wolves in sheep's clothing. And there was one I did before that. But I was like trying to tell people. Get this message through. You know. Um. You know, works comes with salvation. Works does not come before faith. That's why you can't mix the two. Once you start mixing them, it creates confusion, and God's not the author of confusion. He made it, they all, like I always say, Peter, Paul, John, all of them were adamant. And even Jesus himself, it, his grace is sufficient. You see? That's what he told Paul. 
it is His grace alone that works comes with salvation. I hope that clears that matter up. It's 30 minutes in. I thank each and every one of you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed uh, me bringing forth about the apostles and stuff and the three James. That may be what I might put the title on this for. <laughs> but uh, God bless each and every one of you, and I hope uh, by the time you all re reach this, it'll probably be uh, today is Monday, and maybe it'll be Tuesday. Hope you all have a great, blessed Tuesday. And um, I'm signing off.